I'm going to share with you why patents are a death trap for entrepreneurs. But first, a quick disclaimer. I'm an engineer and an entrepreneur that brought my own product to market, and I am not a patent attorney, so nothing I say should be considered as legal advice. Okay, now that we've got that out of the way, let's get on to the good stuff. If you ask a patent attorney, inventor, or just about any new entrepreneur, they're going to tell you that the first thing you need to do when you have a great idea is you need to patent that idea or that product so that you can protect it. They may also incorrectly encourage you to keep your idea secret until you have the protection of a patent in place. Patent attorneys will, of course, encourage you to get a patent as soon as possible because that's how they make their money. It makes no difference to them if your product actually makes it to market, since they make the same money whether your product is a success or a failure. Inventors and new entrepreneurs also think a patent should be the first step because they place too much value on an unproven idea. On the other hand, if you ask experienced entrepreneurs who have previously brought products to market, you will usually get a totally different answer. For example, Barbara Corcoran of the hit TV show Shark Tank summed it up nicely when she said, quote, the worst mistakes an entrepreneur can make are to piss away money on patents and PR. Those are her words, not mine, but I, I agree. By starting with a patent, you are essentially saying that you know your product will be a home run, so you must protect it from thieves. That is a huge gamble, though. The honest truth is an unproven idea is nothing more than that, an unproven idea. An untested idea has no real value until someone executes on it and proves it to be successful. The value is in the execution of an idea, not the idea itself. If you follow me, you will hear me repeat that over and over again because it's so important yet so rarely followed. The value is in the execution of an idea, not the idea itself. Your first priority should be proving that there is a market for your product. There is no point in spending money and time to protect something that may not have any value. Before spending thousands of dollars on a patent, you, sh you need to spend time executing on your idea. This means proving your idea is worth the investment of time and money. Keep in mind that around 97% of patents that are filed ultimately fail and never see the light of the market. These are horrible odds, so don't ever start with a patent. Keep in mind that in general, no one is going to steal your idea. This is, a, this is a huge myth with inventors and new entrepreneurs. And it's one of the biggest myths that I see repeated over and over. In fact, many entrepreneurs are so paralyzed with fear of someone stealing their product that they never share the idea with others. The one thing I can guarantee you is if your product idea never leaves your head, it will never make it to market. People or companies simply do not steal unproven ideas. I'm not going to say it never happens, but it is extremely rare. I mean, you may also be struck by lightning before your product reaches the market, but I don't think anyone would make lightning avoidance a primary strategy for their startup. You need to focus on the things that are statistically likely to happen and not on some rare chance that someone's going to steal your unproven idea. Instead, what really does get stolen by other companies are successful products, not just unproven ideas. Instead, they're going to wait until you've made your product a massive success, proved that there's a market for it, and proved that people are willing to buy it. These are the things that will get the attention of your competitors. Every company has hundreds of ideas, but they can't pursue them all because they know a lot of them will be failures. Executing on an idea and proving that it will be a success is what really creates all of the value. In general, keep in mind that patents focus on the idea, but to be successful, you have to focus on the execution. Your idea is worthless without the execution. Everyone has ideas for new products. Many people dream of bringing one of their ideas to market, but execution is what separates the successful entrepreneurs from people who just want to dream. Okay, so let's say you, you have a patent, but now what? So many entrepreneurs focus everything on a patent and give no thought to what they're gonna do after they actually have that patent. 
Failure happens when inventors overfocus on their product idea and how to protect it without giving any thought to all of the other steps required to succeed with a new product. Getting a patent is one of the most obvious things you can do, and that is one of the reasons I think so many entrepreneurs make the mistake of placing too much importance on a patent. Most product entrepreneurs, and especially those that consider themselves an inventor, prefer to focus on a straightforward goal like getting a patent rather than on something more complex like market research and speaking with customers. But if you haven't thought about what comes after the patent, you will find yourself asking, now what? If you do go the patent first route, then you will find yourself over a year in your project, having spent close to $10,000 or more, yet all you have to show for it is a piece of paper. There are such better ways for you to spend your money than on a patent. I always stress that you need to minimize your financial risk. In the beginning stages of product development, your priority needs to be on minimizing your financial risk. This means don't spend money unless it's absolutely necessary. For most startups and entrepreneurs, $10,000 is a huge amount of money. And there are lots of other ways that money could be more efficiently spent than on a patent for your first step. Remember, most patents never make it to market. You need to think positive, but at the same time, you need to operate under the assumption that your product may very well be a failure. If your product idea isn't a hit, then you can always pivot to a new product idea based on what you've learned pursuing the first idea. But instead, if you spent all of your savings on your patent, you won't have the financial means to pivot if it does become necessary. As a new entrepreneur, most of the assumptions you find yourself making will eventually prove to be wrong. So you always need to leave yourself in a position to be able to pivot. Chances are any patent for your new device will be narrow in scope, which it makes it easy for competitors to work around. Let's assume there are 10 possible solutions to a problem. A narrow patent will only offer protection for one of these solutions. But if there are nine other ways to make a product, do the same thing and solve the same problem, then a competitor can swoop in and easily work around your patent. A narrow patent offers minimal protection and very little value. The main value in a narrow patent is simply being able to say that you have a patent. A broad patent may protect all 10 of the the solutions in the example that I've mentioned, but a broad and a broad patent will protect the general concept of the solution. And this makes it much more difficult for a competitor to work around a broad patent versus a narrow patent. So a broad patent has a lot more value, but the problem is they are also very rare and generally more expensive to obtain. You need to focus your early efforts on proving that a significant market exists for your product, and you need to prove that your product is the best solution for that problem. The best solution not only solves the intended problem, but it also must be profitable to manufacture and sell. If if your solution proves to be too expensive to manufacture and sell at your desired retail price, then what's the point of getting a patent? This is why you need to worry more about whether your product is worth protecting instead of worrying about how to protect it. There are two different categories of patents. Broadly speaking, a utility patent protects the operation function, or solution that you've come up with. Whereas a design patent, on the other hand, protects the appearance and aesthetics of a product. What most people think of when they think of a patent is a utility patent. In general, a design patents and narrow utility patents are both easy to work around. Obviously, with a design patent, you can just change the way something looks. The advantage of a design patent is they tend to be much cheaper to obtain. A utility patent will cost around $10,000 or more, whereas a design patent will typically only cost a couple thousand dollars. Still not a trivial amount of money for a young startup, but definitely more affordable than a utility patent. Design patents are especially easy to work around in most cases, but they do allow you to say your product is patented. From my experience, being able to say your product is patented or patent pending is actually more important than the patent itself you're probably not gonna be in a situation where you have to go to court and defend your patent. If someone does try to infringe on your patent, do you really have the financial means to take them to court? And is that really the best use of your time? 
But having a patent is helpful in other ways, like when you're trying to sell to large retailers that may require a patent. Although design patents and narrow utility patents are lower cost options than a broad utility patent, they are still expensive and shouldn't be your first priority. With everything that I've said, you, you still need to have some form of protection for your idea. You don't want to just openly tell every single person out there about your idea with absolutely no protection. Fortunately, there are much cheaper ways for you to protect your idea, at least initially. For example, instead of pursuing a full utility patent from the start, I suggest that you instead use non-disclosure agreements, or just NDAs for short, to protect your product initially. NDAs can be used with developers, suppliers, manufacturers, and retailers, and even potential customers that you speak with. Another fantastic option, especially in the U.S., is to file what is called a provisional patent application. You may want this protection before you start publicly sharing your product idea on your website or for crowdfunding. In the U.S., a provisional patent application will offer you patent protection for one year. The beauty is that it only costs you a couple hundred dollars and does not require an expensive patent attorney. You can file a PPA, Provisional Patent Application, or PPA short, completely on your own with very little documentation required. At the end of that year, you can decide if you wish to proceed with getting a full utility patent. By that point, you will have a lot more data to help you determine if your product is worth the investment. Only a very small percentage of patents make it to market, and only 3% of patents ever make it money. This is why you should never make patents your top priority. Instead, focus wisely on proving that there is a true market for your, your product and that it can be eventually manufactured and sold for a profit. Equally important is abandoning the fear that your product idea will be stolen. You need to be seeking out customer feedback from day one, so stop being so secretive. Okay, I'm John Till with Predictable Designs. I hope this video has been helpful. I'll see you next week in the next video. Hey there, this is John Till, founder of Predictable Designs. If you enjoyed this video and you want to keep learning more about developing, manufacturing, and selling new hardware products, then be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel and also check out the websites predictabledesigns.com and thehardwareacademy.com.